Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for October 17th on this fantastic Thursday, 2024. We're keeping an eye on Invest 94L this afternoon, as you can see on the latest visible satellite imagery here, courtesy of CyclonicWX.com. We can see there is a little bit of deeper convection that we're watching right now on the satellite imagery, but the good news is this has not yet led to a closed surface low. And what I mean by that is we're trying to see if there's going to be westerly winds here on the southern side with winds fully wrapping around on the northern side. That has not developed yet, which means the system lacks organization. And instead, we're seeing winds that are doing this. They're coming in out of the southeasterly direction here on the the eastern side of the system and even on the southern side we're seeing winds out of the easterly direction with enhanced easterly winds here to the north so right now at the moment what this looks like on a wave pocket analysis is that winds are doing kind of this right now they are not closed which is good because if this was a closed low we would see more convective organization however though there is some rotation in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, just a little bit, but we'll see if that actually drills down to the surface and tries to develop a surface low or not. But right now, it doesn't look like that will happen anytime soon, which is good news for our system. Now, when looking at the water vapor satellite imagery, also, this shows us where there's areas of drier air or where there's areas of more moist air out there. And so what we have here is definitely a organized moisture pocket here. You can see all the relative humidity that is relatively high surrounding the environment. This is all dry air here. So we can put dry here, we can put drier air over here, and then we can put drier air up over here. So these three areas have drier air. This is moist right in the middle, and this indicates that if this system had more better organization to work with, a closed surface flow, this could actually be able to develop within this environment. But it's kind of too late now. The system had its time to do so, and things are slowly going to become unfavorable as this moves generally towards the west-northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So now, when taking a look at the latest Air Force mission that flew through Invest 94L, for this afternoon and they have found that the system is not organized at all and only a brief area of tropical storm force winds was found on the system so this is where the plane is now they're headed back so they're not in there anymore but when they did fly through the system they did find a little area up here of tropical storm force winds that is winds of about say 34 to about 40 knots or so okay that does not make this a tropical storm because why let's take a look at what the plane also found to the south of the system and you can see these wind barbs right we learned this in milton's um track we looked at those wind barbs what they mean so hopefully you all remember that so you can see right here winds are doing this so they are not closed we're not seeing southerly winds here where we have a closed surface low and so therefore this system is still disorganized by quite the margin not even close of organizing at all i don't see that happening either just because this wind here is gliding through the wave pocket pretty smoothly no imperfections yet so what does the national hurricane center have to say about this well when looking at the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. We can see that this is the area that we've been talking about over the last several days is Invest 94L. There's the X that marks the spot. Love how the NHC actually uh, does this for a lot of us. And then there's this other area that we may have to start talking about more in tomorrow's video. But for right now, we're not concerned about that one just yet. And we're going to be watching this one a little bit more the rest of this video as this remains a threat. The National Hurricane Center does give this right now a, let's take a look, 
a 20 to 30 percent chance of tropical development in the next two to seven days, whereas our other area actually has a higher chance of tropical development, but it has limited time over the water because this is going to be impacting Honduras, um, possibly Cozumel, and eventually into the Yucatan Peninsula. This has a 30% chance over the next two to seven days. So with that being said, let's take a look at what 94L might do out there in the Atlantic over the next, say, five to 10 days. This look at the GFS model. This model is ran from the United States federal government four times a day, and it basically simulates on what the weather might do over the next, say, two weeks. In this case, we're not going to go out that far um, for many reasons, okay, that I've mentioned in my live streams before. Here's a look at that system. Um, in the Western Caribbean, this is that area that has a 30% chance. You can see an area of low pressure right there. Enhanced convection, some showers, some thunderstorms. And then, of course, we're watching this area over here. And I mean, barely a little bit of a nub there, maybe a little bit of a wave here, you can see it, but otherwise nothing too significant to say the least for the time being. But as we go forward here on the GFS model, you can see, oops, I went a little ahead of myself. You can see there's that system right there um, over the western portion of the Caribbean, right there, 1,003 millibars. This is for Saturday morning, by the way, October the 19th. And our other system, 94L, doesn't seem to be impressing the GFS very much, only with some enhanced convection and some shower thunderstorm activity. And going forward, doesn't look to develop at all over the next five to seven days, which is good. This is going to be really just shredded in pieces because of that wind shear and drier air that I'm about to show you. In fact, let's take a look at our deep layer moisture plot. So let's go back in time here over the next, say, 12 hours. So this is for this afternoon. And what you're looking at here is a deep layer moisture plot. All right, so these uh, yellower or these greener turquoise colors are more moisture. So you can see here, this is moist and this is dry right here. This is dry air, okay? Drier air over here little bit of drier air down here and down there. So when forecasting this system, we always look for those perimeters or parameters. Drier air, is there any drier air encroaching onto the system or is there any wind shear? In this case, there is a lot of drier air that is going to be impeding development. And as we go forward here, by the time we go into, say, a Friday afternoon, um, the evening hours of October the 18th and the 19th, you can see there is our tropical wave right there, not doing much versus our other tropical wave over here near, say, oops, near um, Honduras, Cozumel, and also Belize in the Yucatan Peninsula area might develop. We'll have to see if that actually proves right on the GFS model. Sorry. Just stepped on the cord again. Hopefully that did not impact my audio. And then going forward again, you can see um, quite a bit of um, drier air and the shear is just going to be ripping this into pieces. And so 94L doesn't have much of a chance to survive these hostile conditions. Now when looking at the deep layer wind shear forecast from the GFS model, this is the 850 to 200 millibar um, shear forecast. And simply to put it, any areas in red here are areas with very strong wind shear values. Anywhere between, say, 35 to 50 knots, that is really strong wind shear. Nothing gets past the wind shear that the system could be facing. There is our disturbance. They're moving into the Yucatan Peninsula. Lesser wind shear. These shear vectors are outward. So... That means shear is generally really light. All right, but as we go forward in time, you can see that this shear on 94L is going to increase to about 30 to 35 knots. And you'll see that here on the ship's model guidance, statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme is what we, um, that's the acronym for that. And you can see wind shear here is going to be on the increase. 
The European model, not showing much either. You can see just an area of shower and thunderstorm activity. Um, as we go back to on this, you can see our area of disturbed weather. This is for Friday night into Saturday. And there is our other area of disturbed weather. Um, looks to be like a little face. I'm seeing that here on the European model. Look at it. There's its eyes and there's its mouth. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. Pretty interesting to see that. Probably people make fun of me in this video for showing you all that. Uh, but yeah, there's a little face there on the Euro. And then going forward, you can see that system moves into the um, eastern portion of Cuba by the weekend. So by Sunday, you might get impacted with some enhanced rainfall and gusty winds on this system. And that system falls apart. So does our system in the southern portion of the Bay of Campeche over the next 90 hours. So now when taking a look here at our spaghetti plot, this is really important because this gives us an idea of ranges of possible outcomes when forecasting a system. All right, so let's bring our annotation thing up again and we're gonna use black, okay? There's our system right there, invest 94L. And this is the forecast points. This is 12 hours, this is 24 hours, this is 36 hours, this is 48 hours, about three days here, about four days, five days. So you can kind of get the idea where this is going to be moving towards over that period of time. So in about, say, we'll just put six. Oh, no, wait, this is 12, my bad. So this is 12 hours right here. I'm just going to keep this up because I'm sure you guys like it. So this is 12, 24, 36. 48, 60 hours. Oh, wait, no, this is 72 hours. My bad. Um, so this is 72 hours right here. So 72, and then that's 96. So 96 hours, and then 120 hours are right here. So I hope I drew that up very well, and it's showing us that this could get close to these islands within that next 24 to 36 hour period. Maybe in the next three days, it's going to pass just to the north of the Dominican Republic before it hits towards, say, um, portions of, say, Cuba, as well as, again, the Dominican Republic, the Turks and Caicos Islands will definitely need to be watching this. And again, please do not use this map to make decisions. Please seek official info because these are spaghetti models and these are not your cone of uncertainty. This could still trend further south or trend further north, go slow or go fast, okay? That's what we look for on this. So now our intensity forecast is pretty much straightforward. I have not had much um, prediction of this becoming a major hurricane and that still stands today. So you can see Invest 94L, our model intensity guidance. Models have uptrended just a little bit from where they were yesterday. You can see more of these models still indicate that this is gonna become a category one hurricane, including our ship's model indicates, oh, we're, we're probably gonna see a cat one hurricane versus our other models like the hurricane models. Wow, those are on the lowest end of the scale. So therefore, I'm following suit with this video and I'm gonna make this line a little bit thicker so you all can see that. And so my intensity forecast is right about in here. So I'm only forecasting a, you want to hear it? 40 mile per hour system at the very moment. Okay. I'm not going too crazy. All right. I'm on the lowest end of the scale, but right in between the halves A2 and the HWF2 model. I think those are the two halves models, I believe. This, yeah, that's the H wharf. My bad. Either way you put it, um, I'm in between these two hurricane models, but below all of our other models that are still thinking that this could become a high-end tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane, okay? So hopefully that clears up any confusion. Now, as far as the ship's forecast goes, which again stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme, not System, Scheme. And so when looking at the pros and cons to this, 
This is the good thing about this system is that there's going to be quite a bit of drier air. So you can see the relative humidity here is good. It's low. So we're going to put an X on that. Unfavorable. Our sea surface temperatures here are favorable. So we're going to put a check mark there. Our wind shear is not favorable. So because the shear is going to be more than 20 to 30 knots right down the road in about, say, four to five days, right? And let me move that right there so you can see the days. And then uh, what else? Our upper ocean heat content, we're going to actually drag that up there. Our upper ocean heat content looks pretty conducive. So we're just missing a couple of things here. The drier air or the wind shear and the drier air that the system is currently facing at the moment, okay? And, you know, when we have the drier air, the system doesn't thrive very well in it. All right, so that's a look at that. So now, with that being said, I sure hope this video was very informative, very detailed, and really helpful. If you found this video very helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks, because again, this is the alpha version of me doing the Promethean board for you all on systems like this. And unfortunately, or fortunately for a lot of people, this will be my last update on this system because, well, there's not really a lot to track in the tropics, two areas that have a low chance of tropical development, but again, this will be monitoring this. And if needed, we may have to do another update on this tomorrow. But otherwise, if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow without the Promethean board. Where we're going back into the home weather office tomorrow at looking at the tropics or the United States. Because I have no school tomorrow. Okay? So have a good one. And see you back here tomorrow.